Recently, Nikon released this, the D600, a full-frame camera in a much cheaper, lighter body. It may be in a class below the 5D Mark III and the D800, but they should be compared. I mean, why should you spend more for these when you've got this, the D600? Let's get one thing out of the way first. Well, the D600 does use a lot less metal in its construction than the D800 and the 5D Mark III. And you can actually feel it, it's a lot lighter. But the thing is, it's not flimsy, it's well-built. Good plastic, quite solid. Lighter weather sealing too. In terms of functionality, the, the D600 is quite similar. It's kind of in between the D7000 and D800. Same buttons, same places. 100% accuracy viewfinders all round. Although some things are missing in the D600. But the thing is, when you look at the front of it, it's missing one crucial thing of the D800. That PC sync socket. There's also differences in terms of maximum shutter speed. In terms of the fastest shutter speed, the fastest on the D600 is 4,000 a second. Whereas the 5D Mark III and the D800 have an 8,000 of a second fastest shutter speed. Also, the flash sync speed on this is 200 of a second. Whereas the D800, 250 of a second. May be quite useful, especially with the D800. But the thing is, the 5D Mark III is also a 200 of a second flash sync speed. So it's not just a class thing. Anyway, we're not just here to talk about specs, we're here to test them out and talk about specs. And we've come to Def Boxing, a place where people train in the art of kick artery. So now we're gonna do a little fight. Well, I'm not gonna fight. I'm just gonna do the easy bit. But for this, we've got two fighters. We've got the first professional boxer in Hong Kong. It's Rex. Rex made his professional debut in 2011 in the Super Flyweight division. He's had 12 years experience and has won 7 out of 7 with 4 knockouts in his professional career, picking up the UBO Asia Pacific Champion title along the way. He's ranked number 4 in WBC Asia and has been 3 times Hong Kong amateur champion. And over here we've got AO. AO. Let's get started. Let's get fighting. Let's see some blood. Well, maybe not. Let's just fight. Let's go. The boxers get in the ring, but we've also found that Kinky likes it in the ring too. So Kinky has actually turned up, apparently she wants to be a pro boxer, but for now she's just got the easy job of uh, hitting the, the bags up there. So it's a good job. Right, so here we go, I've got the 5D Mark III first. I like this, one of my favourite full frame cameras. Quick autofocus, and that's what we're going to test first, for low focus speed. Here we go. Fight action. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, this guy, Rex has won seven out of seven. Actually, it's backlighting, I need to get over there. Killing machines, killing machines. I mean, I've got this on. I'm letting this choose the autofocus zone. I mean, I've really improved this over 5D Mark II. This is miles better. But right, I'll get out of the way. Start shooting with the cannon and things feel quite responsive. Ooh. This is no sparring. <laughs> I'm getting away. I do like the Canon 5D Mark III. Its focus is rather pleasing. It feels ready for action. There's no denying that this really is a great DSLR. What about with the D100? Oh, get some action here. Uh, must have been doing too many Canon reviews recently. Can't even mount a nickel. Oops, it's getting close, getting close to this side. Luckily I've got one of these. Actually I'll leave that, it's heavy. There we go. And it's, I find it's easier to change the autofocus zones. It seems more intuitive to have the autofocus zone changing thing. 
down here. I think you're enjoying it. She's learning some stuff here. And without a doubt, it seems a little bit more sluggish when it comes to picking that zone. It's not in the zone! The D800 has less AF points, 51 versus 61 of the cannon, and less cross type with 15 over the 5D's 41 cross type. Not all that bad, but in this light, it doesn't seem as willing as the cannon to focus. The Nikon D800 has the slowest burst also, at 4.6 FPS over the 6 FPS of the Canon and 5.5 FPS of the cheapo cousin D600. Let's try the D600 out though. <laughs> Can the new affordable full frame from Nikon prove to be a serious competitor? It still offers 39 AF points with 9 cross type, which doesn't seem so bad. Panting heavily. However, in the subdued light, the D600 just isn't quick enough at the focus when compared to the other two. Almost frustrating, even when I just use one single point. Oh just hunting there for the, the focus. What's more, when you look at the placement of the AF points, the D600s are clustered together a lot closer than the 5D and D800. The D600s looks like a load of tightly packed dots on a sanitary towel. The 5Ds flashes like a Pac-Man game on acid. There's no question about it, the focus of this is quite a bit slower. I'm using the same lens I did with the D800. And it, sometimes it just won't focus. D600 is not really ideal for sports in low light. That was a good time to end round one. Okay, ding ding. That's it for round one. Seems like Canon is edging it out with the 5D. The D800 is hanging in there, while the D600 has a bloody nose. So we are rain, uh, round two. Um, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. It's camera reviewing business. In this round, it's all about image quality. Tell you what, though, this D800 is ridiculous. The file size is massive. Yeah. That's how they come towards me. Now let's see how this performs in terms of image quantity. This has got 36 megapixels. More. Much more than the rest. Kind of ridiculous, really. In some ways, we already know about how well this performs. You usually get a huge amount of resolution with this. Nikon's D800 is a heavyweight, psychotic ear biter. That 36 megapixel provides some sweet detail with all that resolution. How's it compare? Is it a 5D Mark 3? It is a Canon 5D and it's piddly pixel count. Amazing that these guys are actually friends. You know, the Canon has 22.3 megapixels, the lowest of the lot. You know, 22 megapixels is still pretty bloody good. You won't be able to see much difference, even on a big monitor. And the D600 has almost two megapixels more than this. Doesn't really matter. Let's find out. Now, the D600 is said to have better dynamic range than a 5D Mark III. doesn't really matter. You have better things to worry about than the minute difference here. Image quality is on the same level as the Canon. The D800 sticks out there like a panda with a baboon's arse. The megapixels do matter, only if you print huge. I kind of give up with this autofocus. This is ridiculous, so to speak. I might as well just take pictures of Kinky with this. Just, uh, Barely focus on that. You won't see much magic crap. Wow, that's amazing differences in practice. I kind of want to see how they perform in terms of noise, but Kinky wanted to open a can of Smackdown on someone. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and then my head comes off. Uh, fatality. 
you know, they hit them. They're, they're trained at being, you know, not me. Here we go. Yeah, it's good at this. Why she wants to train up as a killer. Don't mess with her. You break her arm, no. she's gonna put a fist down your throat. That's what's gonna happen with her pink glove all the way down. Mm. Bumped up to ISO 8000, the 5D files look pretty robust. Hardly any noise. It's a killer. They've been suppressed and buried under the patio. The ISO 8000 files from the D800 are still pretty swell, but show hints of it reaching its point of usability. Nikon's D600 looks quite a competitor for the Canon 5D Mark III in terms of noise performance. I really wanted to compare some shots with the same subject, same lighting, same settings. So I went back to HQ to take some more shots, leaving Kinky to bash away at some dude. The D800 has quite a bit better detail at low ISOs, and things with all three look good up to ISO 6400, but you can see on the D800 shot at ISO 6400 that the dark tones start to take on a colour cast. Up towards ISO 12800 and the D800's dark tones don't look so hot. Coloration to that noise. The 5D and D600 are equal in some ways, but in different ways. Noise on the Canon is harder, but a bit like film grain, although the dark tones are looking a little bit rough. The D600 looks alright in the dark tones, but seems a bit blotchy and colourful in the mid-tones. This trend continues through to the ISO 25600 shots. We slipped in one more test to look at the video. Locke still gives the thumbs up to the 5D Mark III. He likes the finer rendition of the details on the Canon, although he's too busy editing this video in some inception kind of way to put his thumbs up. He prefers the noise performance of the 5D, then the D600, and then the D800 for video. One slightly annoying thing about the D600 is that you can't change the aperture in live view video mode, unless you have a manual ring or turn off live view. Canon's 5D Mark III is probably overall a more rounded camera. It's a well-specced, good-performing multimedia DSLR. I don't think that the rival D600 has taken off the edge of my admiration for this Canon. Although the D600 does offer as good image quality, if not a tad better, with equal noise performance, albeit a cheaper body and cheaper focus, but at a cheaper price. The D800 just does things a little differently. It doesn't jab well, but it sticks focus swiftly enough, and the resolution for low ISOs is quite phenomenal. There's been no knockouts, but they are all champions of full frame in their own kind of way.